Good afternoon, everyone. I am meteorologist James Longwood with Dynamic Weather Agency, and today we're going to talk about that winter storm is going to be impacting parts of the upper mid-Atlantic, uh, parts of the Ohio valleys, and into the Northwest Territories. So let's get into it. So taking a look at our snowfall map, we do agree that there's going to be some significant snowfall within parts of uh, central and eastern Pennsylvania, southern New York, uh, southern and eastern New York, into parts of Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. Uh, we can see a swath about 8 to 12 inches plus, probably not going to see anything more than uh, 15 inches of snow in uh areas. Um, we are going to take a look at some models later. They're going to show you some more snowfall, but we don't see anything that's going to uh, do that. A lot of maps that you're going to see online might show some more snowfall than what we're showing, and most of those are for people trying to get likes and shares and stuff like that. We're trying to give you real forecasts uh, so you guys are well aware of what's going to happen. We're not going to overhype this event or do anything like that. I mean, this is going to be a major event, but as in what other people are going to say is major, they're going to exaggerate it a little bit more than what I am going to. Uh, with this system, of course, we're going to see some accumulating snowfall across the region. With that, there's going to be some slippery roads, so be sure to give yourself some more time and increase distancing while you're out there driving because you're going to need that extra stopping distance. Uh, again, like we said, there, the roads are going to be slippery and we're going to see accumulating snowfall due to the uh, very cold ground temperatures that's not going to melt much of the snow. With snowfall, expect some poor visibility, especially in some high bit and, to, and some uh, uh, intense banding that we could see that's going which is why we could see some of these uh, great snowfall totals up to 12 inches in the pink region and then also expect some travel disruption if so we could see some maybe some pile ups on some interstates uh, due to the snowfall and due to the uh, intense snowfall that could happen with it accumulating quick enough and the roads not being able to get treated and also expect some maybe some delays or some cancellations within some flights uh, just because of this weather event. But first, before we get into this video, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at our handle at DynamicWXLLC and at www.DynamicWeatherAgency.com where we offer a variety of weather forecasting and consulting services. Now, let's get into the video. So let's take a look at what's going on synoptically with the system. So taking a look at Monday, we have this nice area of energy moving into western Conus. We've got this nice jet maximum uh, pushing into the base of this trough. Uh, since it's still upstream of that base of that trough and this jet max is, uh, is uh, stronger than the energy leaving the trough, it's going to deepen the trough as it moves in across uh, Conus. Taking a look at the next couple hours, you can see that trough deepening as that area of energy moves into that trough. With this nice deep upper level trough and the jet stream dipping this far south, it's going to allow the spill of some nice cold air moving on into uh, parts of the Great Plains and even to parts of southern Conus. So we go a few more hours in, we can see an another jet max developing across parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, ahead of that, we got some divergence aloft, as noted by the difluent flow over parts of Tennessee and parts of the uh, mid-Atlantic states. Uh, this is going to be good for the development of surface lows. Uh, with the increase of the divergence moving into this area, it's also going to allow some rap for some rapid intensification of these surface loads. We're moving our way down in the atmosphere and taking a look at our 500 millibar relative vorticity map, which basically we're looking now at spin in the atmosphere at 500 millibars. Um, basically, with vorticity, ahead of that is what we call positive vorticity evection. Areas of positive vorticity of action is good for cyclogenesis, as is indicative of rising motion, which leads to pressure falls at the surface. So what we want to look for with that jet max is both the jet with that jet max and the help of the shortwave trough, where that's going to be right here in this 500 millibar trough, which is indicated by these bending in the height contours right here. We're basically looking for this trough to deepen for surface cyclogenesis, which we already saw that with our 300 millibar chart. We see that trough deepening as it moves into uh, the Great Plains, into Southern Conus. We see that energy area increasing. And with that increasing energy, we're gonna expect some increasing positive vorticity of action, which we're going to uh, see some increasing rising motion, which is gonna to lead to increasing pressure falls at the surface which is going to intensify again, which is going to 
be leading to some more rising motion, which is going to lead to some more pressure falls at the surface. And it's going to be this whole loop until this 500 millibar trough, and the jet max can outrun that surface low pressure system. And we see that increasing in all that uh, positive vorticity, especially as we get up into the Northeast Territory, which, like I said, is going to increase that upward vertical motion, which is going to enhance lift, which is why we're going to see increased snowfall totals within that region that we marked on our map. So now that we've looked at the synoptic setup, uh, let's take a look at the uh, Weather Prediction Center's uh, front, frontal forecast charts, um, taking a look at what they're thinking of what's going to happen. So as, as we mentioned, we do uh, have that area of energy that's going to be moving out of western Konus into the uh, Great Plains and into southern Konus. Ahead of that, you have that uh, head of that jet max, you have a nice area nice area of, uh, you have that nice deepening 500 millibar trough. Ahead of that, you have some nice positive vorticity of action where you're going to have Pedersen's rule uh, happen on this pre-existing uh, stationary boundary that's going to be located over Texas. It's going to kick up a surface low. The surface low will then track to the north and to the east with the upper level flow. Uh, it's going to get hung up with the uh, Smoky Mountains. The uh, upper level features will continue to move on. Where that 500 millibar shortwave trough is going to interact with a pre-existing uh, area of vorticity along the east coast and a uh, kind of a boundary right there with the nice warm thermal contrast from the gulf stream compared to the relatively cooler land uh, this is a favored area for cyclogenesis that 500 millibar trough and the difluence ahead of that 300 millibar uh, uh, out ahead of that 300 millibar jet max is going to be also favorable for this surface low to intensify rapidly as we see by 12c on thursday that surface low has dropped uh, well over 12 millibars uh, which is a uh, very uh, rapid intensification of that surface cyclone so as we mentioned with our 300 millibar chart we have this nice deep trough that's going to be moving into uh, central conus and like we said, it's going to bring, bring a nice push of cold air. Taking a look at our 850 millibar temperature anomalies, taking a look at a climate average from 2000 to 2019, we're basically looking at the departure of normal, uh, what the temperatures are at 500 millibars. And this kind of will also reflect to what will be happening at the surface. So as we move into time, we see that nice development of that cold air moving into uh, parts of the Great Plains and even into parts of Texas and southern Conus and even moving into parts of the Ohio and Midwest Valley before it moves its way into the Mid-Atlantic and even into parts of the North uh, Northeast Territories. Now when it comes to taking a look at snow, one of the things to take a look at, we like to look at precipitable water. Basically what we're looking at is how much water is within inside this column of this atmosphere. And as we see our part, parts of this North, uh, Northeast Territories, we see areas around 1 to 0.8 to 0.7. So this is why we think we can see uh, 7 to 8 to 12 inches of snow within this region right here because of the precipitable water uh, values. Because you can, all, you can do some math using the 10 to 1 uh, liquid uh, ratio for snow. Um, one inch of rain equals 10 inches of snow. So if you have these precipitable water values around that in that region, you can expect to see snowfalls around that. Now, if you had, of course, precipitable water values around two moving into that region, then that's when we might start being expecting seeing some increased snowfall totals into that 20 inches range. This is why we don't think we're going to see 20 inches of snow. Now, you can have some elevated moisture in some of these higher areas that could be moving in that could increase snowfall over this region, but it should only affect areas of higher elevation. And that will be limited to, you know, where there's mountainous regions and stuff like that. Now you could do now you will see some of this extra moisture probably wrap around this low and move it into this region, which is why we expect to see some maybe 12 to some isolated areas of more than 12 inches of snow. Uh, within the area that we noted on our map because we do expect to see some more increased moisture infection with this than what the model is showing because the model tends to underdo some of the moisture sometimes. Some of the other things that we could look at too is also based on those uh, p watt values we could take a look at precipitable water anomalies. We could see how much increase is this compared to something that we normally would see around this time of the year. We do see some increased PWA anomalies, which is why we think that we might see, again, maybe some areas greater than 12 inches of snow, but we're not expecting a huge swath of areas, just because we do expect to see that increase of moisture infection within across this region.
And again, satellite imagery also shows that nice uh, water vapor imagery is also showing this nice moist air wrapping around this surface low moving across this region. So again, we do agree that we will see some nice moist area action. We do agree that we'll see some nice snowfall totals in this area, but nothing as in like some of those maps you're going to see online of 20, 30 uh, inches of snow pushing into the region. Now, I'm not saying that you may not see 20, uh, it's not possible to see 20 inches. It's just very not likely to see 20 inches of snow with this event. And this event is still very far out. We're looking at, you know, 100, 102, 108, 110 hours out. Um, the weather models, again, like I said, th this is part of the limitation of weather models. Taking a look at the model, uh, you can see this nice surface lobe moving on into the region uh, Wednesday into Thursday. See this nice band of heavy snowfall across Pennsylvania, southern New York, uh, into Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Uh, then you also see this nice rain snow line that's developed right along here. Uh, based on this track of this low pressure system, this moves a little bit further west. You can see a little bit less snowfall right along the coastal area, some more of that heavy snowfall pushed further to the west. Uh, if this system moves further to the east, you can see some more heavier snowfall right along the coast. But we also have to be mindful of the temperatures right along the coast are going to be mitigated due to the water. So that's why you're going to see on some of the model charts that we're going to show and on our forecast chart on why uh, there's such a sharp gradient between the uh, 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 snowfall maps and stuff like that. So taking a look at some of the models, this is one of the runs of the Euro, uh, suggesting a nice swath of 20 inches of snow. Again, we don't think we're going to see anything really much over 15 inches of snow just because of the precipitable water values over the region. Uh, here's another run of the Euro that also is suggesting around 33 inches of snowfall with a max of 45 inches. Uh, that's just that's just not, not going to happen. Alright guys, uh, if you see maps like this online, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's literally for likes and shares. Uh, here's a uh, part of the UK met. Um, this is a little bit more tailored down, but still su suggesting some very significant snowfall uh, greater than 15 inches over this region, which we don't think is possible. And here's the GFS. Like we mentioned, the uh, models are kind of, uh, you know, suggesting different tracks. Uh, the Euro is a little bit more west and further north, while the GFS is further south and further east. Um, we don't think that this is a possible possibility either. Again, it's still over forecasting some of the snowfall totals, suggesting 20, 18 inches of snow in some of these regions down here. Again, we think that's going to be further more into Pennsylvania, into southern New York, and into the parts of uh, Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Again, with some mitigating snowfall factors right along the coast, as you can see in all the models, the nice sharp uh, cutoffs right along the coast. You see this nice increase of that because of that rain snow line. Uh, which we'll have to pay attention for. And we'll also have to look for where uh, on those radars of the model uh, where that nice uh, uh, 800 and 750 millibar frontal genesis band will occur because I'll increase some lift in that area. Uh, again, this is now the NSEP -G GEFS uh, ensemble forecast. This is uh, showing a control with 30, 30 members. So there's a 31 member model. Uh, basically what it does takes control and then does slightly different uh, parameters to show different outcomes of what could happen by just changing one little thing each time. And this is the best way on when it comes to uh, forecasting uh, winter weather, especially this far out. As we said, we're about 120, 114 hours, you know, out. Uh, you know, it's to it's best to look at ensembles because it shows you all the different scenarios. Some members showing you you're going to have uh, a lot of snow, as in you can see with member 4, 5, 9, 8, and 24, and 28, you see a lot of snow, and then you see members like 13, 14, 11, that are suggesting less snowfall across the region, and even 21 is another one like that. So you got to use... Um, all of the tools available when coming up with your forecast and just taking the model verbatim and uh, uh, hey guys you're gonna get 20 30 some inches of snow when in reality you're probably gonna see 12 inches so some isolate areas hitting up to 15 maybe an area with 18 inches once we post you know the snowfall total reports but uh, you're not gonna see those you know crazy 20 30 some inches of snow Again, here's our snowfall map. Again, we're expecting accumulating snowfall, some slippery roads, some poor visibility with some of those heavy snow bands, and you know, some travel disruptions. Uh, be sure to like us and follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, be sure to check us out at www.dynamicweatheragency.com. I offer professional weather consulting and forecasting services. 
On there, you can also find some of our storm chasing footage and also find our feature on the Weather Channel's hit series, World's Wildest Weather. Until next time, this is meteorologist James Longhoff. Have a good day.